Hello, everybody. My uh, name is Francis Defoe, and I am the marketing manager at COVID. And today I would like to welcome you on our uh, today's webinar. Now, the topic of today is what we call the new paradigm in, um, in cloud uh, development, cloud native. So today our goal is to familiarize you with the principles of uh, build once and uh, run everywhere. We will share some use cases, show a demo and, um, and much more. So we can really demystify cloud thinking for you. Now, the host that we have for today is my colleague, Tom Kerkhoven. Tom is an architect here at COVID and he's worked on multiple cloud uh, native projects. He's a very active blogger uh, as well on this topic. He's also a Microsoft valued uh, professional and he's a renowned speaker on, um, on multiple conferences. Now, just to tell you that you're really in really good hands for today's topic. Now, before we get started, should you have any questions during this webinar, you can use the Q&A tool, and then Tom will have a look at your questions during the Q&A at the end of this, uh, this webinar, and he will answer these live. Now with that, over to Tom. Thank you very much, Francis. So uh, as Francis said in the introduction, I will demystify cloud native and explain and show to you how you can build your application once and run it anywhere based on your demands because platforms are constantly changing and so does your underlying infrastructure. So let's get started. So I'll briefly explain what Cloud Native is and how you can make your applications portable. And then I will also show you that you can run Azure outside of Azure uh, if you cannot use Azure as a cloud as such. And then I'll uh, do a demo where I show you various options uh, to run your applications. And then at the end, I'll wrap it up uh, with a nice summary and try to answer your questions. So Cloud Native is one of the newest paradigms in software development. And according to IDC Futurescape, uh, it's going to run 35% of all production workloads uh, by next year. So it's, it's pretty soon, uh, and that's why we are here to help you uh, if you are considering cloud native, uh, that you at least know what it is and what the added value is of that. And what is cloud native? So basically cloud native means that you package your applications and all of the dependencies in a single container or multiple containers, depending on your needs, so that that container contains everything to run your application. You can then deploy it as microservices if you want. It is not a requirement, but because it's so easy to deploy them, you can just uh, deploy them multiple times, fully change how you compose applications and uh, tailor it to your needs, basically. Uh, it works very well with the DevOps practices uh, where you can go from code to production very fast and have that automated testing. Uh, and what you will be developing uh, as a developer is what will run in production, which uh, decreases the amount of bugs and increases the reproducibility, uh, which is super important. Now, some of the common cloud native scenarios uh, are listed here. Uh, where modernization of applications is one of the biggest ones, where you take those legacy applications that are super hard to deploy, you wrap them in a container so that they are self-sufficient, and you can basically run them on new infrastructure, which is more modern, which is most probably also uh, longer supported because it is new uh, without having to change the application itself. Because in the past, we had to do uh, use full deployment guides with manual actions, make sure that the depending uh, runtime has all the prerequisites, but now with containerization, you can really make this uh, a lot more easier. Uh, SaaS delivery and real-time telemetry are also two big ones where if you have these containers, you can very easily deploy them um, for, multi -tenant, for multiple tenants in your uh, SaaS platform or in terms of real-time telemetry, you can really build these scalable uh, platforms that, uh, that can handle all the loads uh, of your IoT systems, uh, which we see a lot more. We have customers doing this uh, with uh, cloud gateways, 
we have customers running cloud native applications on ships uh, because of that uh, portability and scalability, uh, which makes it a lot simpler. And then geo distributed applications is also uh, a big area because um, the time that it takes to deploy applications is so much faster that you can go to multiple regions uh, uh, more easily and also have that distribution so that you can bring your application where your customers are. And Microsoft is also committed to the cloud native community. Uh, here you see uh, an overview of all the uh, all the projects that they are either uh, spearheading or involved in uh, with three main uh, areas. So packaging and distribution, which helps you take your application and bring it where you need it. Uh, and I think here Helm is the most uh, most familiar one, uh, which really simplifies uh, the deployment of applications and Dapper to make it easier to build these applications. And then for scalability and control, Gatekeeper is most probably the most uh, well-known one, which makes sure that what you run is according to your company standards and security standards. And then uh, Keda and Virtual Kubelet really help you with the scalability of your applications. And because Microsoft believes in standards, they also started the service mesh interface standard that help you use service meshes, but you don't have to. And then to build these applications, they also uh, contribute to tooling where the VS Code extension for Kubernetes is probably the most used one of these three. But cloud native is more than Kubernetes. This is something that a lot of people um, get confused about when they hear cloud native, they think Kubernetes and we have to use Kubernetes. Um, you can do that. Uh, Kubernetes is very good but it is also uh, a lot of responsibilities that you have and with great power comes great responsibilities. So it is a option, but not the only one. So let's have a look uh, more in depth what cloud native really means. At least this is my definition because it's also uh, a very a vague term in the, in, in the industry. But for me, that means you use containerization as a packaging model which allows you to build and package your application regardless of the infrastructure. You can easily run that application uh, practically anywhere, be it on the cloud, uh, multi-cloud, edge, hybrid or on-prem. And you store the images in a container registry uh, as an environment, environment agnostic artifact. And this is your artifact store. Kubernetes, however, is the industry standard if you need container orchestration, but it can be too much. Um, you will have to spend time making sure the cluster is up and running, it's running the latest technology, etc. cetera. Um, but luckily there are ways where you have to worry less about this. So what are the options? Um, if we have a look at Azure, you can use serverless. You can use Azure Container Instances, which is containers as a service, uh, or you can deploy your Azure Functions and Logic Apps as containers on Azure. Now, in this case, there is a caveat. This does not allow you to do um, pay as you go, uh, but you have to pre-allocate compute. So that is the only caveat, but that allows you to use these paradigms and deploy them on Azure uh, without having to worry about the rest. And if we have a look at platform as a service, you can use Azure Web Apps for containers, uh, which allows you to run um, containers for HTTP workloads um, without having to worry about anything practically. It is Web Apps as we know it, but with containers, um, which is, in my opinion, very nice to have. Then second, you can go with one of the cluster platform as a services, which is what I call them, uh, either Azure Kubernetes service, which gives you a managed Kubernetes cluster, or Azure Red Hat OpenShift, which gives you managed Kubernetes with the Red Hat OpenShift platform on top. Um, however, do know that you are still in charge of, of scaling the cluster, operating the cluster, etc. They only manage the master nodes for you. Uh, and you still have to uh, think about your cluster. Then if you need even more control, you can also do self-hosted Kubernetes, uh, either on bare metal uh, VMs or your own infrastructure, 
uh, or AKS engine, which is basically uh, Azure Kubernetes service, but installed by yourself. Uh, because maybe you need a feature that is not supported yet, uh, or you want to run it uh, somewhere else. Uh, in the last case, you can also use Azure Arc to um, integrate it with Azure. But if you cannot use Azure, we just bring Azure to you. Uh, so that you have that holistic view of all your applications. And this is where Azure Arc is really essential. Azure Arc allows you to have the centralized monitoring governance experience for your workloads that run outside of Azure. Now, this is not specific to Kubernetes itself. You can also do it for uh, data services such as SQL, uh, your own VMs running on-prem uh, and connecting your Azure stack. Uh, but in the context of Kubernetes, you can also do that. You can connect your Kubernetes clusters and remotely monitor them in Azure and deploy to it as well. And here uh, you can also see that you can take the Azure Resource Manager, uh, which is used for deployments, and also bring that uh, outside of Azure to do that monitoring, governance, and deployment experience to your workloads and have Azure Resource Manager and the portal as your single pane of glass for your applications. Now, there's another aspect, which is you can take the Azure serverless offering uh, and also run them uh, practically wherever you want. All you need is a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, for example, in this case, you can run um, Azure Functions and Logic Apps in your factory, on your ships, uh, you can also throw in IoT Edge if you want, and then use SCADA and Azure Arc to connect them or go to another cloud for that uh, high availability. Uh, and API management is another service that also supports this. Now, why would you do that? Uh, you might want to use the paradigm of Azure Functions, which is a function-based workload, or uh, Azure Logic Apps, which is basically workflows and run them there because you have connectivity reasons uh, or you need to run them inside the cluster. That means you can also do that on your self-hosted AKS, uh, sorry, on your uh, AKS cluster in Azure. Uh, for the same reason where you cannot use the consumption of Azure functions because it needs to talk to a service inside your Kubernetes cluster. So it is possible uh, we have customers doing it, but of course, we still recommend that if you're already on Azure, go with the consumption-based team. But the, but the proof here is that you can, uh, you're can you not locked into the Azure function service as such. You have a lock-in on the runtime, meaning you can use Azure functions, but run it anywhere, which is a big step forward uh, in terms of, of Azure serverless and paths. And then taking that further, instead of deploying these functions and logic apps manually on Kubernetes, you can use the Azure application services with Azure Arc, which is in public preview, and basically um, deploy these through Azure Resource Manager on your own clusters outside of Azure. So from an Azure perspective, you run an Azure Function app or an Azure Web app, but in reality, it runs on your cluster on-prem, uh, which you will see in, in the demo in a bit. And they manage everything for you, meaning it comes with Dapper, it uses SCADA for auto-scaling, uh, and they, they handle everything for you. Um, so if you need to run Kubernetes and you want to use these services, this is highly recommended uh, as an additional abstraction layer on top of Kubernetes. So uh, I think it's time for a demo where I will show you a containerized application that I will deploy to both Azure Pass, Kubernetes, and an Arc-enabled cluster. Um, if you are interested, there's a link at the bottom um, with some, uh, some pointers if you want to do this yourself, how to get started. It's not fully written out, uh, but at least you should know where to start. So if we have a look at the demo, I will change a container image. I will tag it and push it to the container registry so that we have a new artifact. After that, I will create an Azure web app for containers. 
to which we deploy the application through Azure Resource Manager, and then it will use that new container image. After that, I will use a Kubernetes cluster, an Azure Kubernetes service instance that I have, and I will use the command line and the YAML declaration to deploy the same application to that cluster without making any changes. And then as, la as last demo, I will take a Kubernetes cluster, which is Arc enabled, and I will do the same deployment through Azure Resource Manager, but instead of deploying to the path service, I will use Azure Arc to deploy it inside my Kubernetes cluster without knowing how Kubernetes even works. So let's get started. So here I have a simple uh, ASP.NET web application. So for those who are familiar, it's just creating the new project. Uh, but you see that I have a mistake here because I'm linking to our blog and instead it's linking to the events page. So I will make a change so that it's now pointing to the blog. And now we will package this website as a container image. Uh, you can use various tools. You can use VS Code extensions, Visual Studio. Uh, for the sake of the demo, I will use the command line. And I will go to the source folder. And if you have a look, this is just my .NET Core application. And there is one piece that is different. It has a Docker file. So the Docker file, if I open this in Visual Studio Code, you can basically see this as a recipe of how, how we should package the application as a container image. So now it's a bit technical, but we will do a .NET restore, .NET build, and then a publish so that we generate the artifact. And then we basically copy it to the output and say, if you start this container, we will just serve the portal uh, so that people can contact it. So if we do a Docker build, now I'm using that Docker file to compose uh, the image and it will push it to my Azure container registry with the name Cloud Native Demystified. And here you see uh, it's also adding this name and this tag. So this is my version. If I go down to Azure, here you can see uh, my container registry instance. Um, it's preferred to have one registry for all your environments so that they are uh, agnostic. And then you can push these images to, which I have just shown. And then here you can see that I have my new version here. If I click this one, I can do a Docker pull so that uh, my colleagues can run it locally or I can also deploy this. You can see it is a Linux image. Uh, would name the 64, but for this you don't have to worry. And now we will deploy this to Azure. So if I go to the portal, you see there is no web app here. And if I do create web, App for containers. Of course, you can do this through the CLI, through an ARM template uh, or whatever, but for the sake of the demo, I will just uh, use the portal. And this is the same experience for a typical web app where I give it a name, native pass demo, except that I will use a Docker container instead on Linux and I will deploy it to West Europe. It will uh, create a new plan. I can give it a skew. It's the same uh, as otherwise. Uh, I don't want to do fancy deployments. And then this is a new section container where I can basically select either I use a demo uh, container image or I choose one of the available container registries and I choose uh, Azure Container Registry select the registry that we were just looking at and the tag. Now just to review plus create. So now it's going to create an, uh, an app service plan and the web app which pulls the image from the registry and then just deploys it. It is the same as a regular web app. You have configuration, you can put 
uh, authentication on top of it uh, without having to implement this. So you see the service plan is already there. Now we're just waiting for the web app. For the sake of the of time for the demo, I will uh, keep this running and I will already show you uh, what a Kubernetes cluster looks like. So here I have a uh, Kubernetes cluster called Cloud Native Kubernetes, and this is the managed uh, cluster that I get from AKS. You can see I am using Kubernetes version 1.21.2, and it is also my responsibility to make sure that it is up to date and it is still a supported version. So that's already one example of the additional um, uh, things that I have to think about. I can add node pools, which is basically VM scale sets behind the scenes. This cluster has three nodes uh, and it has uh, Linux nodes with the DS2 V2 uh, SKU. Uh, there is a lot more uh, to show, but uh, I will skip this for the sake of the demo and I will now connect to the cluster. So I'm using the Azure CLI here uh, and I just do oh, the get credentials. And it's adding it to my Kubernetes configuration. So now you can use the typical uh, Kubernetes tools to interact with the cluster. Now before I go there, I will first go back. My web app has been provisioned. Uh, you can see it is just app service. Uh, all, everything's the same and I have a URL. If I go here, you can see uh, our blog. And it didn't pull the recent image. OK, so the image was cached. And for some reason, it's not including the fix. Ah, OK. I forgot to show you one thing. Demos always go wrong. I created the image, but it is only locally now. Uh, and I still need to push it because yesterday I did a dry run and I used the same tag, so now I need to overwrite it. So that was my mistake. Actually, let's be sure. And let's do this on the fly. So you can re-tag an image. So now I just want to make sure that it has the latest version. So I will tag it as a 0 0.3 because yesterday I already released it, uh, a two. I will now push 0 0.3 to the registry. And if I go back here, you see the new version which was tagged, uh, pushed now. And now you can also see how, how web apps for containers work. Uh, they have changed the UI. So here in the deployment center, you can see the same configuration. And now I can just select the new version. It's going to save it. It's going to pull the image from the registry and it's going to up with my fix. And here in the logs, you can actually follow the process uh, and see uh, it at uh, 21, it pulled to 0 0.2, uh, and now it's restarting the application uh, to have that new container image. Let's see if it has already completed. And now, if I click the link, you see that it has the link to the blog, which is the, the, the fix that I did earlier. So sorry for the mistake, but now you also see that you can retag an image, push it, and then just update your web app. Going back to Kubernetes, we need to deploy this application on our cluster. So to do that, you need to use a Kubernetes declaration, which basically describes your application. So those who have used Kubernetes before will see that this is just a deployment. Uh, which has a name, Cloud Native Demystified Portal. And then we basically um, describe what it needs to look like. So in this case, we run one container with the same name. We update the version, which is just the image uh, that I want to deploy and the tag. I also have to assign resources. So you have to do some bit of capacity planning for your application. 
Uh, I'm telling Kubernetes that it runs on port 80 and it should probe my application to see if it's still responding uh, and to see if it's ready to serve traffic. Second, I also create a service. Uh, in this case, I create a load balancer uh, for my application and I'm using Azure, so I can use uh, special annotations so that I have a public DNS for my application when I deploy this. So it's, it's all in YAML. Uh, you have to know how to write these, but I first need to go forward up. kubectl apply minus f deploy. So if I now take this YAML and deploy it, you will see that my application was configured and the service is ready. And then you will see that I have uh, an old instance from my driver on yesterday and it's adding the new application next to it uh, and it's still booting up. So if I now do a refresh, it's killing the old instance and, and the old one uh, sorry, and the new one is up and running. So if I go to the Kubernetes URL, which is on, on this URL, everybody can also go there and see that it also has the fix to my to our blog. So it's more uh, technical. You need to know how to write these YAMLs, uh, etc. cetera, uh, but it is possible. But it has a, a fairly steep learning curve. Then lastly, Azure Arc. So what I have here is another AKS cluster, which uh, I use to simulate a cluster on the ship because I don't have a ship. Uh, and that cluster is ARC enabled. So I have installed the Azure ARC agent on my cluster, and now I have an Azure resource representing that cluster. So if my cluster would be in the ship, I would not see that Azure resource for AKS, but I would have this resource telling me that my ship is connected. It is running a certain version of the agent, but I also know which Kubernetes version it's running, what the distribution is. In this case, it's AKS. It can be K3S, it can be Kind, it can be any distribution, uh, and it runs on Azure. Now, the experience is fairly the same. I have the same monitoring experience, as you can see here. Uh, this is identical to what AKS gives you, but for this remote cluster. Uh, so you have a central place to uh, manage all your clusters, and then you have um, the extensions, which allows you to deploy um, certain features and functionality to your remote clusters. So in this case, I have added Azure Monitor, and I also have added application services for Arc, so I can deploy web apps, functions, logic apps onto Kubernetes through the Azure Research Manager. Now, before I go into more detail, let me uh, briefly explain you uh, how that works with application services on Arc. So we have an Arc enabled Kubernetes cluster, which is the Azure resource that I have just shown. Uh, and I have also created a custom location in Azure Arc which is basically similar to an Azure region in the sense that I can deploy applications to that custom location, which you will see in a second. And because I have installed the application services on Azure Arc extension, uh, I can now also create Kubernetes environments uh, running inside my cluster, which is similar to an app service uh, environment. And then I can deploy that web app on top of that cluster, which is what I will now show. So here I have the custom location, which is linked to my Arc enabled cluster. It shows me that I'm uh, it's related to app service. It shows the Kubernetes namespace. Uh, and now I also have the Kubernetes oops, service environment already installed which is also a dedicated resource. If I quickly go to that cluster, I use the same approach. I just connect, and authenticate, and I can use the typical Kubernetes um, tools. The beauty here is that you don't have to worry about it, but just 
to ex to show you. It installs uh, various things for you on the cluster. So there are two, four, seven applications running there, uh, two daemon sets. Uh, bottom line, there's a lot of infrastructure and abstraction for you. You don't have to worry about it. Now, if I go back to the portal and we do another create for web app for containers. Yeah, here we go. Our app on Arc. I again select Docker uh, container. I select Linux and instead of West Europe, I will scroll up and see custom locations Codito HQ. I will select this. You see that I no longer have to configure um, an app plan. Uh, I just deploy to that custom location. Again, I select uh, our container registry and now I use the correct tag. I click review plus create and it is creating it. So it's, it will create an app service plan and a web app for me. Here we go, it's a generated name. And then it will create a web app. So if I go back here, and again, you should not uh, have to worry about this, but you see that it already adds my web app on Arc deployment here, which was the name of the resource that I added. And it's basically generating all the YAML that I have created myself and it's doing everything for me and it will also scale it for me. So if I go to the resource that was provisioned, it looks almost literally the same. It is a web app other than the custom location is different, but I also have a URL. It also goes to the blog and it is literally the same. You can go to your app service plan, which also looks the same. You can scale this one if you want. Uh, and on the custom location, you can now also see these new resources. So I still have the same management experience, but it runs on Kubernetes. So my advice is always enjoy life and only run your own clusters if you have to, uh, because that allows you to focus on your application and not the cluster. And if you want the data center, then please let this be your data center without any servers and use serverless or platform as a service. Basically, don't have to worry about them. It's possible that you have to, but try to avoid it. Now, containers give you the portability. There are various options, but um, you have to choose between complexity and responsibility and control versus simplicity. There are valid cases for all of them, but we typically try to start as simple as possible. But because we use containers, we can easily move the workloads without having to rework them. So start simple and grow your business so that your application and platform can grow with you uh, by starting on platform as a service, for example. And then when you need more scalability and control, uh, you also have hopefully a bigger uh, customer base so you can um, make more investments there uh, and go with, a, with Kubernetes, for example. But containers really give you that portability and you can use them as a glide path to these various options. Uh, and don't be afraid to change because you will definitely do that. Now, the big question is when should you use Kubernetes uh, or application services on Arc? Again, this is still a valuable option uh, that you can consider, uh, but the reasons that we typically see is we have a multi-cloud or run anywhere uh, requirement. Uh, we as a company standardizing Kubernetes so that we have one uh, foundational platform. We want to reduce the lock-in uh, so that we um, can run anywhere uh, or that we are not tied to Microsoft. And we already have uh, workloads running on Kubernetes that we need to integrate with or we need that more control. So these are not the only options, but these are the, the, the typical ones 
uh, which are also valid reasons to consider them. Uh, and in summary, you can easily build ones and run them anywhere uh, where you need them. Uh, and what you develop is what you will be running uh, thanks to containerization. And that allows you to move these applications um, regardless of, uh, of the, the platform that it runs on, uh, but only take the control that you need and try to strive to the minimum. So as a next step, if you are interested, you can also uh, request a workshop uh, by contacting us on email. And uh, I'm happy to answer any questions if you have them.